Thank you very much for uh, being here today. Um, I'm very proud to represent Staten Island in Brooklyn, but I'm extraordinarily proud to represent such a large group of first responders. Uh, as you know, Staten Island and Southern Brooklyn, we're a community that is made up of civil servants, first responders who are willing to put their life on the line. And I'm so proud of the police officers, the firefighters, and those first responders that we represent who are willing and have put their life on the line, have given their life to save others, to protect others, to rescue others, and unfortunately gave the ultimate sacrifice on September 11th. We're here in front of Rescue 5, which lost members on September 11th and continues to lose individuals who served on that day and the days in the aftermath of September 11th. Sadly, Staten Island has seen hundreds of people die. And we are a community that has really lost so much, not just on September 11th, but in the 22 years since. Today we're here because I'm proud to say that the United States Congress was able to do something that was needed, which was to extend the funding in the National Defense Authorization Act that would add $444 million to address the World Trade Center Health Program's budget shortfall. This will make sure that the program has the funding needed throughout 2029. And in addition to that, we added $232 million to extend the coverage for our military and civilian 9-11 first responders who responded at the Pentagon and in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. This funding will allow the World Trade Center Health Program to continue covering the medical treatment for the over 120,000 impacted 9-11 first responders and the survivors who span all 50 states and reside in 434 of the 435 congressional districts. Sadly, we know that there were 2,977 victims killed across three attack sites. But the DOJ's Victim Compensation Fund has received nearly 4,000 claims for deaths linked to the 9-11 related illnesses. The number of FDNY first responders who've died from 9-11 related illnesses reached 343 and is now surpassed the number who were lost on September 11, 2001. According to the FDNY, there are 11,000 firefighters who suffer from World Trade Center related diseases, including 3,500 who have cancer. Just this last November, our community lost firefighter Michael Daly at the age of 56. He lived right here on Staten Island in Great Kills, and he had fought a very long battle with 9-11 related illnesses. We are very sad to also know that in going back to 2003, there have been multiple NYPD lieutenants, detectives, firefighters, sergeants, and others who have given their life in the years since this attack. So really, this is something that was one day but now, 22 years later, we are still seeing suffering among so many. And that is why we're here today to thank our colleagues in Congress. I want to particularly acknowledge uh, my fellow New Yorkers, Congressman Andrew Garbarino and Anthony D'Esposito of Long Island, who sit on the Homeland Security Committee, uh, as well as our U.S. Senators, uh, Chuck Schumer and Gillibrand, and our speaker, Mike Johnson, who feels a personal connection. He is the son of a firefighter, and his father also did die uh, from cancer. So he knows uh, what it means, uh, not only to support our first responders, but to deal with a loved one who succumbs uh, to cancer. 
As you know, James Zadrogo was an NYPD detective who passed away in 2006 from a respiratory disease attributed to his participation in rescue and recovery at the World Trade Center. And Congress established the World Trade Center Health Program in 2001 to provide medical treatment and monitoring for the 9-11 responders and survivors suffering from the effects of the toxins in Ground Zero. And this program covers the lifespan of all exposed, including responders and survivors, of the attack on the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and Shanksville crash site, and the children who were in schools in downtown Manhattan on September 11th and during the cleanup, and those who have since experienced adverse health effects linked to the attacks. We um, thank, again, all these unions for being here, and I'd like to invite them because they deal with this each and every day. I mean, they have members and they work on a very personal level to not just advocate for what was done by Congress, but to make sure that their members are receiving the care that they deserve. And I'd first like to uh, introduce our UFOA uh, President, Jimmy Briosi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to say uh, on behalf of the UFOA, I speak for my membership in thanking uh, Congressman Maliotakis and the New York delegation for getting behind such an important bill. But I speak on behalf of also one of the 120,000 people affected by uh, the effects of 9 11 uh, and also having first hand experience, having a member of my family, my father, being affected by the outcome of 9 11 and suffering for over eight years with a significant cancer and eventually succumbing to that illness. And I can tell you the one caveat that made that process bearable, that made it somewhat humane was the fact that we had access to very good coverage if not the best coverage in the world and the impact that that has to take the worry of the bill to take the worry of access and to take the worry of whether or not you're going to give yourself the greatest opportunity to live as long as you can despite what you were exposed to. Um, we can never undo the exposure and as we fall further and further away from this incident it's representatives like uh, Congressman Maliotakis that keeps this on the forefront because 22 years is a long time and there are multiple tragedies that have followed this event but the lingering effects of this event are going to stay with us for quite a long time and the effectiveness of treatment will start to diminish as time goes on and without the refunding without meeting the rising cost of health care we're fearful that our people will begin to suffer more than they already have we cannot thank you enough and we look forward to continued support as this lingers on for years to come. But thank you very much, and thank you for continuing to bring attention to this event. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'd like to uh, acknowledge our UFA, U Uniform Firefighters Association, and we have Robert Utrice here. Um, I, I really thank you for hosting us today, and I know that FDNY really has suffered so tremendously, uh, particularly our firehouses right here on Staten Island, so we thank you uh, for being here today. I also want to say that uh, they also stood alongside me last year when we fought to make sure that the widows and children of our first responders, uh, some who were left out of uh, the compensation from the uh, terrorism uh, sponsors fund, uh, to make sure that they were rightfully compensated for their losses. Um, and I was proud to uh, get that across the finish line, working alongside your unions. Um, my name is Bobby Eustace. Uh, I'm the vice president of the UFA. And uh, I want to thank the entire uh, New York delegation, Congresswoman uh, Melitakis. And uh, to echo what uh, President Brosey said, um, and I'm with here with the Staten Island Trust, or, uh, Eric Bischoff as well, uh, on my board, and on behalf of my entire board. Um, it's been a long road, 22 years, and um, it's, you know, just this past year we've lost 36 members, just in our department alone, just just for us, and uh, three a month, and it's almost once a week we're going to funerals. And uh, as the Congresswoman said, there's thousands and thousands of members that are severely ill, that need this care. They need this care, and there's a lot of different moving parts of this. And uh, 2029 may seem like a long time to people, but it's not that far away. We're in 2024. So there's a, there's a lot that needs to be done and there's a lot of funding that still needs to come around. And uh, this is just, I'm speaking on behalf of my agency, as you see the many unions behind me and many other first responders that are affected. And um, th this care is, is, is greatly needed and it's still something that we need to ask and we need to ask for more. And uh, we're very grateful that this is being able to be given right now, but we know that we're gonna have to ask for more, unfortunately. 
And uh, we just want to say we're very grateful on behalf of our members, our, our 20,000 active and retired. And uh, I just want to say thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'd just like to make a few uh, brief remarks. You know, every this city was impacted so greatly on 9-11. I'm the borough representative for the UFA, and I, I would dare to say Staten Island has the deep scars of that terrorist attack that's still with us today. There were 343 firefighters killed in that building. Did you know that out of the 343, 78 were Staten Island residents? 11 of them worked right in this firehouse right behind us. And dozens and dozens succumbed to the 9-11 illnesses after the fact over the last 20 or so years. So this community has felt this impact just as much as anyone, if not more. Since Nicole, when she was a young lady in the New York State Assembly, and then uh, had transitioned to a, a fine congresswoman, she's kept her commitment to the UFA and to the New York City Fire Department, whether she was a state legislator or in Washington uh, in Congress. Her and I had stood together at the Postcards Memorial not that long ago where she had worked tirelessly on legislation to help our widows and children who, who were, uh, their families were victimized by 9-11. And yet here we are again with Nicole Meliotakis, who again did not forget her commitment to New York City firefighters and New York City police officers. And we're very proud to stand with her and we're very grateful for her efforts. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite Patrick Henry, NYPD PBA, to speak. Gitis, so we'll, <laughs> that's why we put him up front here. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, Patrick Henry, president of the Police Benevolent Association. For everyone standing up here, uh, never forget isn't just a slogan, it's our mission. For us, 9 11 wasn't just one day, it's been over 8,000 days. And that sacrifice continues every single day. We've lost over 330 police officers to 9-11 related illnesses. And thousands more rely on that medical care that the World Trade Center Health Program provides. That funding is necessary. These police officers ran towards danger. This is a debt our country owes to every single one of them. And we're truly thankful for Nicole Maliotakis for standing up for our heroes. And I want to also thank your colleagues for standing up for our heroes. Thank you. Chris Monahan, representing our captains, also a Staten Island resident. Um, actually, um, I think it was covered by my colleagues with the, uh, the fire department and uh, Pat uh, with the PBA. But uh, Nicole, just want to publicly thank you. Uh, it's easy to walk away and forget something, and it's 22 years later and you haven't forgotten us. And we really appreciate it. Thank you. Paul DiGiacomo, which I'm proud to sport. I'm getting a lot of grief today, by the way, for right. picking the detective, tie, to, uh, detective uh, scarf. But I'm very proud to also welcome another Staten Islander, president of the Detectives uh, Endowment Association, my good friend Paul DiGiacomo. Thank you, uh, Nicole. Uh, I want to thank you for securing this funding uh, to keep the members of the DEA safe and getting in the medical care that they deserve. And all first responders uh, that are being affected by the funding that you secured. Uh, thus far, we have lost over 150 detectives to 9-11 related illnesses. Uh, and there are dozens and dozens that are suffering, suffering right now as we stand here today and secure this funding. So this funding is going to go a long way uh, for these, the, the detectives that are, uh, are suffering out there with cancer and other illnesses due to 9-11 and for the firefighters and police officers and EMS and everyone else that responded on that terrible day. You know, uh, it was very unique for the rank of detective. It was the largest crime scene in the history of the United States of America. And New York City detectives were down at the landfill, they were down at Ground Zero, and they were at the morgue trying to bring comfort and closure to the families of these victims. And, uh, and they suffered the price. They suffered the price uh, by dying, and they're suffering the price today 
uh, by contracting illnesses due to 9-11. So this funding will go a long way, and Nicole, uh, the DEA will never forget what you did for us. Thank you very much. And representing our EMS, Local 2507, we have Oren Brazile. And, and we know you had a um, member who was hurt yesterday in Brooklyn. Yes. So we want to please uh, give him power. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Oren Barzile. I represent the FDNY EMTs, paramedics, and fire inspectors. Uh, just to echo what uh, my colleagues and uh, brothers and sisters have been saying, uh, first, I want to thank the Congresswoman Nicole Notakis for continuing our, our, the support and the funding that is needed for the countless first responders who are still, 22 years later, suffering. Uh, we've lost over 100 EMTs, paramedics, and fire inspectors, uh, and as of, as of today, uh, we have countless members who are sick, critically sick and ill from cancers, and this money will go a long way in helping them. Uh, we will continue uh, with your support, helping uh, all our members and all our brothers and sisters here. Uh, to my right is our World Trade Center liaison, Gary Smiley. He's a rescue paramedic with the FDNY. Uh, he has a few words that we would like to say also. First off, I want to thank Congresswoman. She's been a staunch supporter of first responders since day one. I want to thank all my brothers and sisters of all the agencies behind me. The point I'd like to make is that a week does not go by that my phone doesn't ring with another member that has the horrible diagnosis of a cancer or a severe respiratory illness. 22 years later, our brothers and sisters that responded that day and in the nine months of rescue and recovery and their ha with their exposure to the toxic dust continue to get sick. So this funding is critical to maintaining our health care. When funding first started to get short back in 2010, I can recall my first time in Washington and speaking to senators and congresspeople and telling them that my surgeons were leaving the World Trade Center Health Program because they feared that they would no longer have a job. Thankfully, because of the congresswoman and the New York delegation, that no longer happens. But this funding is still critical to make sure that the people that are way more sick then I and my brothers and sisters behind me continue to get the vital health care that they deserve. So I want to thank all of you for keeping this story up in front. It's easy to forget, but we thank you all for not forgetting, and especially to the Congresswoman and her staff for not forgetting us. Thank you again so much. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to once again acknowledge uh, those uh, union uh, leaders who uh, waived their right to speak, and uh, Lou Turco, President, uh, NYPD, LBA, thank you for being here. SBA, our sergeants, uh, James Gatto, our Staten Island trustee, Michael Perugia, recording secretary, and of course the Port Authority, PBA. We have Michael uh, Mollahan, first vice president, Sean Kehoe, the recording secretary, Nicholas Bricado, sergeant at arms, and Vincent Ricci, the trustee, uh, for joining us today. Look, at the end of the day, the most important thing is that we keep our promises, and that we have the backs of those who have our back each and every day. And that is why I will always support our first responders. I'll support our law enforcement, firefighters. Um, but more importantly, see at a time when not many things can happen in Washington, right? We can't seem to agree on much. You see uh, that there's bicameral, bipartisan support to make sure that the necessary funding is there. So again, thank you to my colleagues um, who worked together to make this happen, particularly Andrew Garbarino and Anthony D'Esposito of Long Island, and of course, on the Senate side, uh, Senator Schumer and Gillibrand. As you can see, Staten Island was tremendously affected uh, on 9-11, but in the years since, and we're very proud to be home to so many of the union leaders that you see here today. Any questions?